Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to attend this event. Uh, as in the previous session, uh, it was mentioned that when you're the last person to come and talk, everything has been said. Um, and I would like to touch on some of the points that uh, were addressed, but from a research perspective. IBM Research Ireland uh, has here in Dublin one of the 12 research labs uh, of the company. And it's probably the only lab that is focusing primarily on smarter cities. Uh, and we have a very nice relationship with the Dublin city here. Let me start by giving some statistics that my, uh, my team has collected. By 2050, the world's population will be over 9 billion. Uh, the International, International Energy Agency says that production of conventional crude oil peaked in 2006. Uh, we have quite a few inefficiencies. Global car fleet is likely to double from 800 million in 2010 to 1.6 billion in 2030. In 2010, transportation contributed approximately 27% of total US greenhouse gas emissions. Let's also talk a little bit about waste. The UK run out, will run out of landfill space by 2018 unless new places are found. Food, which is actually quite disturbing, one third of the food for human consumption is wasted globally. And I say it's, a, it's painful because we know there are many countries where there's not enough food uh, for the citizens. Water, the leak rates are 14, per, 14 to 60 percent in the US, 30 uh, percent in Dublin, 26 percent in France and 7 percent in Germany. Energy also, we see a lot of waste. Um, Europe wastes about 20% of its energy due to inefficiency, and the direct cost of inability to use energy efficiently amounts to more than 100 billion per annum in 2020. Uh, in the US, 58% of, of the total energy produced is wasted due to inefficiencies. Uh, also, we see changing demographics, uh, it was mentioned before. By 2020, an extra 3 billion citizens will be middle class. And we all know that the uh, population is becoming older and aging is a big issue for our, our cities. By 2025, the top 600 cities will account for 25% of global population and 60% of the global GDP. So these are just a few numbers uh, to indicate uh, uh, the movements, uh, the trends in smarter cities. But let me say that as a mathematician and an engineer, I do not trust statistics that I have not manipulated myself. Um, nonetheless, these numbers do tell us something. So in summary, what do we have? We have a global population growth. Uh, we need to feed and provide energy for this uh, population. We need to maintain and improve the quality of life. We are, running, we are coming into a situation where the supply is, restrict, is restrictive and we don't have, or we're moving from an infinite resource model to a finite resource model. How do we make the best use of our current infrastructure? In many cases and for many industries, we cannot uh, get a bigger infrastructure. We just have to use it more efficiently. And also regulation. We are seeing more and more regulations uh, with the uh, goal to improve our life's quality of life. So let me just make a profounding statement that uh, my team made as we were discussing this topic and brainstorming on different solutions and what we as researchers need to look for. Uh, previously, citizens adapted to the city, but in the future, the city will have to adapt to its citizens. And we have three ways of going about it. Uh, in a simplistic, let's say, research approach, we can manage the supply, we can manage the demand, we can influence the demand, and we can talk about collaborative uh, options about uh, influencing the demand, and we need to have adaptive infrastructure, elastic infrastructure. Why now? Well, we have a lot of sensing and actuation everywhere, so we need to make use of all the information we get from those sensors. Um, certainly for me a very uh, interesting aspect is the mathematical developments with the increased computational power and the better understanding of the mathematical models we are now in a position to understand and model better complex situations and use that to better actuate and uh, work around the city problems and certainly we have 
regulations and working closely with regulators, we can influence uh, or we can help implement some of those models. Uh, managing supply and demand, some examples might be buses and routes and the scheduling, and we have worked with uh, the Dublin City uh, bus for better uh, scheduling of the routes. Elastic infrastructure, we can think about speed limits. Uh, can we affect the traffic light sequencing to improve uh, the flow of the traffic? We can implement tolls. But then we should also be looking at uh, unexpected or unintended consequences of tolls. And actually, I'm um, only eight weeks in the job as well as uh, one of the earlier speakers. Um, I came to Dublin and in one of my trips to see uh, the area, I realized that I pay a toll if I use M50 going around the city, but I do not pay a toll going to the city, which is the reverse of what New York does, and I, uh, I was in New York prior to coming here. Um, I realized after going to the city that it's not easy to, toll, to place a toll going to the city because of the road structure, but these are some of the unintended uh, consequences of tolling. Um, finally, the last thing I would like to talk about comes uh, to the optimization and optimizing the city. And there I would like to touch a little bit on collaborative optimization, but from a research perspective. First, let me talk about synchronization. And synchronization is killing the city. We all go to work at the same time. We all drop the children to schools at the same time. Uh, we have more or less similar shopping habits, similar leisure habits. Um, we use energy at the same time, so how can we break this synchronization? Uh, and how can we adapt uh, behavior of the citizens uh, to make better use of our infrastructure? So within my team, we're looking at mathematical ways to better understand the human behavior and by understanding this behavior, can we provide incentives to change it, bring collaboration in some ways? Can we introduce pricing mechanisms that will improve the energy consumption and spread it out? At the same time, as we look at mathematical models, we also be, need to be very careful about the assumptions we put into the model. And there's a very known uh, paradox in transportation, actually it's in communication networks, and it's called the Brace Paradox, where it has been observed when you have a capacitated network and you add one edge or one road to improve the traffic, to make the traffic flow better, you can actually make the traffic situation worse. And this is because you rely on the assumption that people will continue behaving the same way as before, but that is not true. And actually in London there were some examples where adding a new road uh, really did not help, in the contrary, it um, made the traffic situation worse. So, in our analysis, we need to be bringing in this, what we call the feedback mechanism, the control um, feedback loop, where we try to change human behavior, but at the same time, with all the information that we collect from the sensors, we adapt the model to better reflect how people are behaving. Um, finally, uh, let me just say, uh, when it comes to transportation, electric vehicles has been a very hot topic, and there's been a lot of research taking place for what we can do, how can we improve the electric vehicles uh, by studying the solutions in the car. Can we make the battery more effective? Are we relying on lithium air battery? Is, are there any other options? Uh, how do we make the charging more efficient and so forth? But we could also look for solutions outside the car. We can be looking at collaborative uses of the vehicles. We can be looking at uh, different positioning of the charging stations. And how do we empower and how do we bring incentives for people to make better use of the infrastructure we put in place? Thank you.